slide valve setting and other modifications. Some useful information about slide valves and other things on a Stuart 1010V which needs a lot of attention and a Stuart Victoria steam engine which is much better. This video is just an assessment of what is wrong with the engine. The first things are obvious. Some of the nuts are missing from the steam chest and there isn't a displacement lubricator so there's just a hole where that should be. Model engineering can be a really rewarding hobby, but it can be very frustrating if you do not have the parts you want at any given time. I used to waste an awful lot of time rummaging through drawers looking for specific nuts and bolts. So what I tend to do now when I go up to Blackgates, I buy some more nuts and bolts of various types. I'm going to put the engine on my manually operated turntable, so you can have a close look at it. I do like Stuart engines, and by the way, once again, I don't have a connection with the company itself, I just like the product. Most of the engineering on this engine is done to a very good standard. As you can see, things seem to fit, and the valve gear functions very smoothly. As I move the lever, the expansion link slides across the die block very easily. The purpose of this video is to show an assessment of what's wrong with the engine, so that I can quote for a repair. So the first thing I notice is that the engine smoothly turns over. There are no tight spots and the crankshaft looks like it's held together, not like the last one which was falling apart. Without further ado, I'm going to put some compressed air into the engine and see what happens. But the first thing to do is to fit a blanking plug. This hole on the inlet manifold is where the displacement lubricator would normally be fitted. But this engine doesn't have a displacement lubricator and it's no good having a hole on the inlet manifold. So I'm just using a blanking plug to blank it off. Normally I would mention about not over tightening the blanking plug but there's no chance of that at the moment because I can't find my spanner. Ah, here it is. And now with the compressed air line firmly connected to the engine it's time to turn on the air supply and see what happens. Well, I can see an oil leak around the steam chest but there aren't any gaskets in there I don't think so that's easily explained. And there's a lot of air coming out of the exhaust pipe. And when I turn the flywheel, nothing happens. No power, not even a glimmer. So what's going on here? About five or six things go through my head that it could be. But the thing that's wearing me most of all is there's no power. It's not even trying. Let's have a look at the eccentrics. Hmm, that's not right. One of them's going round and the other one isn't. And the other one sort of rotates randomly. But the two that are going round are not that far out of the position that they should be. What I'm doing at the moment with a screwdriver is poking about in the steam chest and illustrating the point that the slide valve needs to float on the bar that moves it up and down. If the slide valve is stuck to the bar, it will be held off the steam chest and you'll get a similar result to the one I've been getting, whereby a lot of the air is just blowing to exhaust. But in this case, that does not seem to be the problem. After applying some lubricating oil, I'm going to refit the bracket and I'm going to use some of my new 7BA nuts that I bought from Blackgates to bolt it all together. And here we see the importance of gaskets. Even with the steam chest bolted to the engine, it is still leaking and it's leaking quite badly. And it's also leaking around the inlet manifold. So what I'm doing at the moment is injecting some oil into the inlet manifold for two reasons. One is to lubricate the cylinders because I don't know what they're like. And the other one is to see where the leaks are coming from. Because if it's leaking the oil should bubble out. And as you can clearly hear the air is just blowing straight to the exhaust. And pumping out quite a lot of oil from the steam chest. Where the pipe is silver soldered into the actual manifold flange it's leaking, so this needs re-silver soldering. This Stuart Models Victoria is part of a really good steam plant that I bought recently, and I featured it in a video, so if you haven't seen that, it's probably worth watching. There's nothing much wrong with this steam engine, but I want it to be something special. The first problem that I discovered was a tapping noise when the engine was running, and this was because the crank web was pinned to the crankshaft with a parallel pin. So by using a taper reamer and fitting a taper pin, the tapping disappeared. There are two more problems that I would like to put right, and I can correct both of the problems at the same time. 
The first one you can clearly see here. The steam chest cover is quite rusty and needs cleaning up. The first thing to do is to remove the small 7BA nuts that hold the steam chest cover onto the steam chest with these studs. The normal way of fitting studs, or the normal way I fit studs, is to use the shorter part of the stud to go down into the casting, that way the stud bottoms at a certain height. But whoever's built this has done it the other way round, they've put the nuts on the short part of the stud, and the longer threaded part of the stud goes down into the casting. I suppose it's a good way of doing it, because the nut can only travel so far on the short piece of thread at the top of the stud, until it meets the parallel part of the stud, and you can tighten the nut down onto that, but then of course when you undo the nuts, the whole stud comes away. I then removed the last thing that was holding this steam chest cover in place, a countersunk bolt. And now I can see clearly what's inside the steam chest, and not unsurprisingly, it's a slide valve. The valve timing is slightly out on this engine, so what I'm going to do here is refit a couple of the studs to hold the steam chest in position so I can turn over the engine and have a look at the valve events. What you can't see from the video is that the engine is still warm and I haven't flushed the water out. I did this on purpose so you can see just how much water is left in the steam chest, quite a lot, and there's some in the cylinder so it's very important after a run to blow it through with compressed air and then blow some oil through to help prevent rusting. After I initially checked the position of the valve as I rotated the engine, and I did find that it's not quite right, I'll put that right shortly, I removed the steam chest and the valve to have a look at the port face. And that's fine, it just needs a clean up. And the valve is not right, the valve is a little bit too long. I need to machine a tiny bit off this. When setting up a model steam engine's valve timing, it's quite important to have early admission. That way the steam is admitted just before top dead centre, and it cushions the piston at each end of the stroke. But be warned, if you haven't done this before, you'll probably take too much off the valve, and if you do that, the slide valve won't be long enough to span the ports properly. Trying to avoid unnecessary work as usual, I didn't remove the cylinder to clean up the cylinder port face, I used a piece of steel plate and some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. The port face wasn't very bad anyway, but it's not recommended just to use some sandpaper, you definitely need it on a piece of flat plate like this. This job took quite a while, this is the edited version, and I also used some machine oil on the port face so that the sandpaper didn't clog. In the end I got a very smooth and very flat finish. In this clip I'm adjusting the position of the slide valve relative to the valve gear. There's a little bit of slop in the valve gear but this is never an issue because the engine's only going in one direction but when setting the position of slide valves, it's very important to always turn the flywheel in the same direction. And in this clip, I'm purposely breaking the rule so that you can see the backlash. There's a direct relationship between the slide valve and the piston. You can't actually see the piston, but you can see the connecting rod. So as you turn the flywheel, the slide valve needs to just uncover the port at each end of its travel, just before the connecting rod reaches the end of its travel. And I don't mean when the piston's halfway down the cylinder, I mean just before. And by far the best measurement to use for this is just a gnat's dick, a very small amount before the end of the travel of the connecting rod at each end of the stroke, the slide valve must just uncover the ports at each end. Again, a very tiny amount. I'm going to make some new gaskets for this, but for the moment I'm reusing the old ones, and they're not very good, but they'll do for the test. I may have to remove all this assembly again, if the valve events are not correct the first time, which has been known. With the help of my video editor, I'm just materialising some studs, yes there they are, and now I can fit the governor housing. And once again, for the reason that I've just mentioned, I'm reusing the old gaskets temporarily. All I need to do now, is just refit the steam pipe, and raise some steam. As the boiler was still quite hot from the previous run, before I dismantled the engine, there was soon sufficient pressure to drain the displacement lubricator. As it turned out, when I ran the engine, it was fine, so I dismantled the steam chest again, and took out the old gaskets, made some new ones, fitted those, and these are the old gaskets that are pretty nasty, so I'm just screwing one up and throwing it away. After giving the parts a quick clean up with a cloth, the engine runs. This is perfection, well, nearly perfection, nothing's totally perfect. I'll let the engine speak for itself. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.
please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.